My name is Angel Lateral, and when it comes to practicing law, I resonate with the human spirit just as much as the judicial system. This isn't your typical business legal advice show, and I'm not your typical lawyer. As an attorney, I have over 16 years of legal experience in the areas of business law and estate planning. As a project manager, I love building and nurturing systems that work. And as a certified guide in the lineage of King Solomon, transformation consultant and practicing Buddhist, I know this all starts with a healthy mindset. Welcome to the Laws of Abundance podcast. Legal advice from an angel. I'm your host, Angel Lateral. This week, we're going to talk about the elephant in the room. This is the difference between an abundance mindset and a lack mentality. I'm going to spell it out so that it's clear and so you can see where lack, my least favorite four-letter word, is creeping into your thoughts and manifesting more of itself to your detriment. First, though, let's give you some research facts for you professionals out there who need them. The quote-unquote abundance mindset is a term coined by Stephen Covey in his 1989 bestseller, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, a book I highly recommend in its accompanying workbook, and both are linked in the show notes. The definition is simply the attitude that there is plenty for everyone, aka plenty of wealth, plenty of prestige, plenty of food, plenty of optimism, plenty of success, etc., fill in the blank, And this definition also includes the willingness to be open to the option that there is, in fact, plenty to be had. So this is a very active thing to hold an abundance mindset. You must cultivate a belief that there is, in fact, plenty and remain always open to the fact, willingly. You can't force yourself or trick yourself or codependent yourself into believing that there's enough for everyone. In fact, more than enough, there's plenty. Plenty connotates overflowing cornucopias of whatever the want need is for humans. You must work on being open to the idea. This openness is the key to holding the attitude. And one of the reasons gratitude helps cultivate abundance is because it makes us more open to the belief that there is in fact plenty. Now let's talk about lack. A lack mentality is built upon scarcity mindset, which is also a belief. It's a belief that there is not enough for everyone. And in fact, there is so little that resources are scarce to the point that we must fight to survive in this world. Scarcity believes that there is not enough food, not enough money, not enough supplies, tools, things to go around, And thus, if you get some of the scarce things, you must hoard it. And this need to hoard just reinforces the belief that this is lacking. The energy is, there is never enough. And it just feeds on itself. And thus, the truth is, there is never enough for that person and the many other persons who hold that thought and belief. As an extreme example of this, think about a hoarder's house. This literal abundance of stuff up to the ceiling comes from the person in every decision and every belief, believing that there is not enough, to such an extent that they save everything, fully stopping their flow and filling their house with garbage or unused things. And the lack and scarcity belief is so reality consuming that they literally do not see that they have plenty of whatever it is they're conserving. Not only do they have plenty, they have an abundance of stuck energy. And it's like a magnet. The belief in lack fuels what they see and creates the reality around them. And it literally attracts more of the same. Okay, so most of us are not hoarders, but a lot of us hold scarcity mindset belief systems, which is simply this. If someone has something, that equals less of that for me we need to look no further than the great United States toilet paper disaster at the beginning of COVID-19 lockdown to see this at work, at least culturally in the United States, the land of plenty, where I live and write this. 
and we suffer as a collective consciousness from lack mentality and scarcity mindset. So let's go deeper. Let's look at what's happening in the scarcity versus abundance mindset. So number one, scarcity point of view equals you are a victim. I have no choice. Two, the abundance point of view equals you are empowered. I always have a choice. Lack mindset. I have no choice but to buy all the remaining toilet paper on the shelf because there is a shortage and I'll be left without if I don't do this. I'm being forced to act and hoard because other people are hoarding. You see how this thought structure is feeding on itself? Abundance mindset. I always have a choice. I know that other people are buying more than they need right now, but I'm going to choose to just buy one package that serves my needs right now and leaves more on the shelf for other people. So the next person can also have what they need. There's plenty of toilet paper in the United States as we are the largest consumer of it and manufacture millions of rolls a day. Then the next person comes and finds enough toilet paper on the shelf. And you can see how this openness shifts the energy and actually ensures that there's plenty for everyone. Scarcity slash lack mentality also has physical, emotional, and mental connotations. If you're holding lack, you hold tension like a clenched jaw. You suffer from shortness of breath or panic attacks. Emotionally, you can experience impatience, anxiety, anger, and overwhelm. Mentally, you're disorganized, confused, and narrow in your thinking. Meanwhile, abundance mindset is physically relaxed, grounded, and present in the now. Emotionally positive, engaged, inspiring to others, excited by challenge. And mentally, you experience clarity, wide perspective, creativity, agency, and flexibility. Just thinking about these two juxtaposed, which mindset is more comfortable and beneficial? Which one is more productive energy feeding versus draining? Lack mentality and scarcity mindset are poison to your body, to your dreams, and your ability to create. If you're going to start your own business or try to take on any new endeavor, if you have a lack underneath it all, you're going to sabotage yourself. So you have to diagnose what's going on and change or transform your thought process to ensure success. You might be thinking, this is easy for you to say, Angel. You've got a successful business. Your needs are met. You're a beautiful human being, and things just come to you naturally. And to all of this, I say, it took me many, many years of actively meditating, cultivating gratitude, and telling myself the truth through my Buddhist practice, through studying the universal hermetic ray Kabbalah, by facing my negative ego on many an uncomfortable ledge, facing my demons to get where I am today. Over 20 years of effort, but it didn't have to take this long. I was stubborn, in denial, codependent, and in various states of self-medication for portions of it. I spent 15 years of my life in a corporate job I hated 50% of the time because I believed there wasn't enough or that I could not make enough money on my own. But now I make four times what I did in that job on a monthly basis and enjoy it 100%. I spent 20 years of my life in really unhealthy or unsatisfying relationships because I didn't believe I was good enough and thus put myself in need of codependent relationships with individuals not worthy of my time and not working on themselves. It took me a long time and a lot of work to be able to confidently say that I am a goddess, I am beautiful, and I am good enough to love myself. And by loving myself and believing that I create the reality I live in, I am doing just that which includes sharing this wisdom with all of you. Our collective consciousness is a dirty river of lack and scarcity. So many of us are hoarders and victims in our life. And this mentality feeds itself. Your thoughts make the collective thought stronger and make it real in your and other people's consciousness. So let's diagnose where scarcity is at work in your life so you can change it. One way to diagnose is to ask yourself a series of questions. Where do you experience jealousy and spite? Do you compare yourself to others? Do you judge yourself and others? Do you have fears about the future? This is not an exhaustive list of questions, but these can help you hone in on where lack is at work, where your negative ego is keeping you stuck, 
because negative ego is all about the things in your subconscious that you are not looking at, but are allowing to run your life. Other questions to ask yourself. Do you have the need for instant gratification, aka the fear of missing out? And where do you need this instant gratification? How often do you complain? And about what? Is there actually something you can do about the complaint? Do you say thank you? Do you use empowered words or victim words like, I don't have a choice? When faced with the unknown, do you tense up, become afraid, cry, drink, eat, smoke, or buy? The foundation of lack mentality is fear. Fear of failure. Fear of being alone. Fear of missing out. Fear of dying. Fear of illness. Fear. But known fear. Fear meaning false evidence appearing real. Fear of illness. But fear equals false appearance appearing real. If you're worried about what you're lacking, you will never be free. Now, don't just start beating yourself up because you've diagnosed lack mindset in your life. That is counterproductive. We want to shine a light on it so you can transform it and be free of it. So you're able to grow into a new way of being and experience the joy that brings. Everything about this podcast is about cultivating an abundance mentality in your life and creating intentionally from that space. Abundance mindset comes with cultivation and practice. Just like anything else, you must learn from practice. As Yoda says, we must unlearn what we have learned in order to truly feel the force, the energy that moves our life. When Luke tried to lift the X-Wing out of the swamp the first time, he said, I can't, it's too big, it's too heavy. In other words, he said, I don't have enough power. Then Yoda showed him that little and old Yoda could do it just because Yoda was tapped into his power and had an abundance to create from. You all have an abundance mindset waiting to be activated. And we all have a proverbial X-wing to lift from our inner swamp. Let's cultivate gratitude and become open to the belief that there could in fact be plenty of love, light, time, money, and energy to go around. And we just need to start tapping into it. Need help with any of this mentality cultivation? or want coaching to start your business, I can help with that using both legal and spiritual tools from an ancient lineage. Until next time, take a deep look at where lack and scarcity are controlling and undermining you, and we'll keep learning ways to transform that. Thank you for allowing me to help you prosper. If you like this podcast, please review and subscribe. You can find out more about me at laterallaw.com forward slash laws of abundance podcast. I'm your host, Angel Lateral, and I can help with that.